Hey y'all, today we're going to be drawing and talking about one of my favorite Greek goddesses, Persephone. Why is she my favorite? Well, let's dive into her mythology and we'll find out. Persephone, also referred to as Kore, which means maiden, all. She is the daughter of Zeus and Demeter, or some people say Demeter, who is the goddess of agriculture, crops, uh, fertility, and food, which is my favorite thing. She's kind of important. She's a big deal. Persephone is also the only daughter of Zeus and Demeter. The most famous myth surrounding Persephone is her abduction by Hades down into the underworld. According to the Homeric hymns of Demeter, Hades had eyes for Persephone. The maiden grew up beautiful. She tended to nature, she grew plants, she loved flowers, that sort of thing. So one day in a meadow, she was hanging out with her nymph friends. She was drawn to a narcissist plant, which I learned is basically, it's a daffodil. It's a daffodil, but anyway. This narcissist was beautiful, so she went over to pluck it from the ground, which then in turn shook. Hades then emerges from the ground in a chariot drawn by spectral horses and just snatches Persephone up. He's like, you're mine. And the nymphs are like, oh no, what is happening right now? And he drags her to the underworld. She's screaming the entire time. Understandably, just some strange man comes up from the ground and decides to pluck you from your meadow. It's like, and your friends. The only people who heard or were witness to her screams were Hecate and Helios. Demeter is wandering around trying to find her daughter. She's been gone for a bit. She's very, very worried and she doesn't, she doesn't know what to do. So Hecate approaches Demeter and says, hey, you know what? I heard this scream. I know that you were looking for your daughter and maybe it's her, but I never saw anything. So what they do is they go to Helios, who's the god of the sun, and he sees everything. And you know what he says when they approach him? He's like, oh, Demeter, I feel so bad for you. You're probably really worried and yeah, I, I feel for you, but you know what? It's really not that bad. Yeah, Hades snatched her up and she didn't want to go down or anything, but he's like the ruler of hell. He has his entire domain. He's like the richest guy here. He's got nobody but himself and a bunch of souls. It's not that bad. It could be worse. And by the way, actually Zeus said that it was okay to snatch her up. He is, after all, the man, the dad, and he gave permission to Hades. Demeter, understandably, is pissed. <laughs> like, for real. And ultimately what she does is she kind of wanders off and wanders the earth depressed, sad. She misses her daughter terribly. And she does do a few uh, really crazy things and some crazy things happen to her in between this time that Persephone has been forced to the underworld. Things like uh, trying to substitute her daughter by taking another mortal and raising it to try to make it immortal, which means putting it in the fire and then the mom sees it and she's like, oh my god, you're setting my child on fire. Lots of stuff happens. Anyway, in turn, Zeus over this period of time is kind of getting upset because he needs worshipers. Of course he needs worshipers. He's like, where's my people who are like bowing down to my feet? Well, they're starving because, you know, the harvest goddess is kind of MIA right now. She's a little sad that her daughter is gone. Zeus decides to fix this whole mess and he sends Hermes to the underworld so that he can bring Persephone back so that Demeter can finally be happy again and they'll have worshippers. They won't be sinking into famine anymore. Hermes arrives at the underworld to take Persephone back home, but Hades is like, hey, wait a minute. For your little journey up to the, you know, the land of the living, why don't you have some food to go? Why don't you eat some of this pomegranate? You're gonna be hungry. Okay, so now, just a little information for you, my audience. It is common knowledge that if you eat any
anything in the underworld, you don't leave. You are officially stuck. So that's that. And as you could probably guess, Persephone decides to eat the pomegranate. Demeter, Zeus, Persephone, and Hades all have to come up with this compromise because now she is bound to hell. Demeter needs to feed people, and Zeus is just sad he's not the center of everybody's attention right now. So what they do is they agree on this. Hades says that Persephone is going to be equal ruler of the underworld. Not only that, but one third of the time of the year, Persephone has to join Hades and rule with him in the underworld, while two thirds of that time she can come up to the living and spend it with her mother Demeter. So they all agree, that's that. The myth has been told numerous times in various shades. Whether Persephone decided to eat the seeds willingly, or maybe she was tricked, or maybe it's just some other version of events. It is rumored though that Hades does grow on Persephone and they do eventually maybe fall in love, kind of. Persephone does at least get jealous because Hades over time does take a lover, Menth, and she's like, hell nah. And so she turns Menth, this nymph, into our beautiful mint plant, which I am you know what, Persephone, that's fine. I'm glad we have mint here. <laughs> Persephone, for the most part, is shown to be fairly loyal, except for one, <laughs> one time. So Aphrodite gives this baby, Adonis, to Persephone and says to raise Adonis. And she does. She raises this little baby up to be an adult. And what happens is that uh, Persephone doesn't want to let Adonis go anymore. She's fallen madly in love with him. He's the most beautiful man in the entire world. So Aphrodite and Persephone are butting heads and they're like, I want Adonis. So what Zeus has to do, again, because he is the ever mediator, he tells them that Adonis has to spend one third of his time with Aphrodite, the other third with Persephone, and then he gets one additional third to himself, but Adonis decides most of the time to spend it with Aphrodite, because, you know, it's Aphrodite. Many of the Greek myths containing stories about Persephone are actually during the time where she's in the underworld. She's encountered by quite a few Greek heroes and other characters. That includes Orpheus, Eurydice, and Heracles. Over time, she would actually get the title Dread Persephone. How cool is that? I want to be called the Dread Katie. That'd be awesome. Now we have the Orphic Myths, which talks about Persephone and her children. There's other variations of the Persephone story also in the Orphic Myths. So Persephone might have been seduced by her father, Zeus, as a snake. She ends up bearing Zagreus, which I'm sure a lot of us know from the video game uh, Hades, which I love. And lots of terrible things happen to Hades, which ultimately he becomes the god Dionysus. You can look that up. It's a little wild. Zeus does this again, but instead of a snake, he actually try he becomes Hades or he mimics Hades in some sort of way. And Persephone has another child, Melanoi, who's the goddess of nightmares and madness, and also very associated with the goddess Hecate. Persephone's abduction serves as the context for the secret rites for the Eleusinian Mysteries Festival or Eleusinian Mysteries. It was a little like a fight club. So the first rule is you just, you don't talk about it. And second rule was probably don't talk about it. <laughs> Lots of people don't even really know exactly what happened during the myth. Lots of people probably participated, but it was still very secret. To some extent, people might have even killed people for revealing the secrets of the Eleus Eleusinian Mysteries Festival. What is theorized is that they would reenact the Persephone abduction. So we'd have our abduction, being dragged to the underworld, Demeter wandering, trying to find her child, and then the relinqu, you know, spring coming up, etc. Pause, super quick. I did two versions of this painting because, well, I got really mad at the first one and it took me like 14 hours and then I dropped the whole thing. Yay for being an artist. So I have two versions, ha <laughs> ha, enjoy. I'm a little on the fence about Hades himself. I get it. 
It gets really lonely being in the underworld. You're just surrounded by the dead. They don't really want to be there. They want to be with their loved ones. They just don't want to be here. He just wanted to experience love, but there's better ways than kidnapping and manipulation, in my opinion. I mean, overall, as far as the Greek gods are concerned, sure, Hades isn't that bad, but the bar ain't set that high. It's just not, it's not. Persephone is the goddess of spring, fertility, growth, but she is also the goddess of the underworld. Basically, her myth explains the seasons, life cycles, but there's a lot more to this myth and these characters. This story has survived the test of time and it has evolved. Our characters Persephone and Hades have been modernized over and over again to fit within our social norms. This story has evolved to mean many other things. For instance, there's a story out there that talks about a child trying to escape their overbearing mother. So Demeter being just this controlling person and Persephone decides, I'm out, and she finds somebody to do that with, which is Hades. We also have a bit of a Beauty and the Beast story with them where we have this vile creature. Hades was almost like Voldemort. You do not want to talk about Hades, especially in Greek culture. But then we have innocent Persephone who melts Hades' heart and he falls in love. We also have things like Lore Olympus where he's this rich guy and he's got these bro dude brothers and we have Persephone who falls in love with him and it becomes a more of a consensual sort of relationship and it's a slow burn. There's so many cool stories surrounding Hades and Persephone, but Persephone in general. Persephone is so cool and so powerful. Not only is she a goddess of life, but also a goddess of death and she's forgiving. Hades is too. They're pretty reasonable people. That's why it's so, so cool. Now that is just basically the myth surrounding our beautiful Greek goddess, Persephone. If you like art and mythology, make sure to follow and subscribe and let me know what kind of gods you're into. I do have quite a bit planned out, so just be patient. I will get to them, I promise. If you are enjoying my art, make sure to check out the description down below and you can join my socials at Katie Draws and see a bunch of other art that's not necessarily myths, but they're a lot of them are inspired by mythology, as is pretty much everything. So for this month's drawing challenge, if you are interested ever in these drawing challenges, join our Discord channel. We have, again, beautiful Anna Sova's version of Persephone. I love seeing everybody's versions of these myths, so make sure to come join us if you are an artist as well, or even a writer. I'd love to hear your stories. I'd love to see your version of all of these myths, gods, etc. Wait, don't leave. There's plenty of myths to go around. Keep watching. Enjoy. Thanks so much for joining me on Persephone. Check something else out. I'll see you next time. Enjoy.